Hey, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over how to find a potential function when you are given a vector field. So before we do go over the question, I'll go over the relevant definition and theorem that will help us with this type of question. So the definition of a conservative vector field is as follows. A vector field F is called a conservative vector field if it is the gradient of some scalar, meaning there exists a function F such that the vector field function F is equal to del F with a gradient of F. Uh, in this situation, f is called a potential function for the vector field of f. And then we also have a theorem. So if f of uh, x, y, so our vector field is equal to p of x, y, and q of x, y, uh, which can be expressed in both these forms. If that is a conservative vector field where p and q have continuous first order partials or partial derivatives on a domain D, then throughout the domain D, we have that partial p uh, over partial q, or sorry, partial p, partial y, is equal to partial q, partial x. Okay, the main question we're gonna be dealing with is as follows. So determine whether or not f is a conservative vector field. If it is, find a function f such that uh, our vector field f is equal to del uh, or the gradient of little f, which is again, a potential function. So before I go into this, I'll go over some quick intuition as to why this theorem uh, holds true at all. So if we look at the condition for what it means for a function to be a potential function, we have this condition right over here. So to express that, we can, again, recall that uh, f we can express as, so p of x comma y, q of x comma y. And then the gradient of f, or del f, we can express as f sub x f sub y, which again are the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Uh, but also remember, we can write this in a different notation, which is using partials. So partial f, partial x, and partial f, partial y. So from this uh, kind of definition or this condition here, we know that these two vectors must be equal to each other, meaning they're equal uh, component-wise as well. So from this, we can, and again, I'm going to shorthand this by, uh, by omitting the x and y, but we can effectively equate these. And what this then gives us is that p has to equal to partial f, partial x, and that q must equal to partial f, partial y. Now, we want to eventually employ Clairaut's theorem, which uh, again states that the second order partial derivatives are equal uh, of a function. So in this case, to do that, we need to take the uh, partial derivative of the opposite variable, so the one that doesn't appear. So in this case, for p, we need to take the uh, partial derivative with respect to y, and for q, uh, vice versa, we do it for x. So here we have partial, uh, right here, partial p, partial y, is equal to, again, so we're taking the partial derivative here, partial y of this, so that is partial squared f over partial y, partial x. And then we do the sort of opposite for uh, q, except in this case, we take the partial derivative with respect to x instead. So we have partial q, partial x. And then this is again equal to partial squared f over partial x, partial y. Oops. Partial x, partial y. Okay, at this step, we can then uh, make use of Clairaut's theorem. So we know that Clairaut's theorem tells us that the second order partials are equal to each other. So if these two are equal to each other, we obviously know that partial p, partial y, and partial q, partial x must also be equal. Um, so yeah, from here, you can then also conclude that's partial p, partial y must equal to partial q, partial x. So that's more of the intuition behind uh, why this holds true and sort of why you see them as kind of opposites. Like intuitively, you may think you take this with respect to x and this with respect to y. Um, at least that was my intuition initially. After seeing it this way, it's much more clear and it's sort of easier to remember uh, that you do indeed take p with respect to y and q with respect to x. Okay, getting to the actual question now. So uh, yeah, I'll just rewrite the function over here. Uh, okay, I guess I erased the question, so that's fine. So I'll rewrite the function over here. 
So we have our function f defined as follows. So our vector field f is equal to y squared e to the xy, and then one plus xy e to the xy, just like that. And of course, we can also express this as, um, or in terms of just the unit vectors. So i, j, or in this case, just i and j hat. So y squared e to the x, y, i hat plus 1 plus x, y, e to the x, y, and then j hat. So again, these are both equivalent. I personally like seeing it in this form. It makes a little more sense to me. Uh, wait, regardless, we can proceed from here. So as always, we'll have this as P and this as Q, and then we can proceed from there. So setting P equal to Y squared E to the X, Y, again, remembering that P is a function of X and Y. Then Q, we are taking to be one plus X, Y, E to the X, Y. From here, we can, uh, we'll do what we found first of all, uh, answer the first part of the question. So determining whether or not F is a, conservative vector field. And again, by this theorem, it is sufficient to check that condition. So let's do that. So partial P, partial Y. Again, we're treating Y as a variable here. X would be a constant. So again, if it helps, you can think of this as like Y squared E to the 2Y or just Y squared E to the Y. Regardless, here you need product rule. So because again, you have two functions of Y. So you have Y squared. So first times the derivative of the second. Again, y is a variable, so the constant is x, and then plus the second, which is e to the x, y, times the derivative of the first, which is 2y. And that is your, then here I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So here we can rewrite this as x, y squared, e to the x, y, plus 2y, e to the x, y. Okay, and then partial Q, partial X, we'll write over here. So partial Q, partial X. Similar idea, we're just applying product rule uh, once again. So again, you have the first times the derivative of the second, e to the XY. And again, remember right now, we're taking the derivative with respect to X, meaning Y is a constant. So again, whenever we're taking the derivative of E to something, we're taking the constant down. So or regardless, just the derivative of the inside. In this case, the constant, but just the derivative of the inside, which in this case uh, would just be y. Let's make sure. Yep, times y. And then, so that's first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So e to the xy times the derivative of the first, which in this case, again, x is a variable, and we're multiplying this by y. Y. And then from here, we can clean things up a little bit. So, and we'll also expand this out. So, this will expand it to here, which gives y or distribute y e to the xy plus, and then y times xy is just xy squared. So, xy squared e to the xy, and then plus y e to the xy. One last cleanup step, just collecting like terms. So, this and this we can combine into 2y e to the xy plus xy squared e to the xy. And with that, we have computed the partial derivatives. Now we can check whether or not these two are indeed equal. And if we do compare these, we do see that they are indeed equal. And then obviously the way you would conclude this, you can just say, therefore, since partial p partial y is equal to partial q partial x, we can say that, or we can finally conclude that F is uh, conservative. Okay, so that's the first part. So we've determined that it is indeed conservative, meaning we now want to find a potential function. Again, reminding ourselves that a potential function is um, a function little f, such that big F is equal to the gradient of little f. So with that in mind then, we can proceed. So again, we're looking for, uh, an f such that the gradient of f is equal to big F. What this then entails, I'll write an indication 
uh, entails is that again, f sub x, f sub y must be equal to pq. Again, pq being functions of x and y. So from that, we have that p and q are equal to their respective functions. So we can set the partial derivative of f with respect to x and with respect to y equal to these uh, respectively. So we know that we have f sub x, which again is equal to partial f, partial x. We know this is equal to y squared e to the xy. And then uh, in this case, we'll work with this first and then we'll proceed. The overall idea is that you'll set up both f sub x and f sub y. And then from there, you're going to integrate either one of them. I usually just go with x just because that's the natural thing to do. And after you integrate, you then take the derivative uh, of your f, the new f that you found so far, with respect to the other variable, and then use the equality. And it'll make more sense once I do go into it. But uh, for now, we'll work with this. So from here, we're going to now integrate. So we can effectively take the integral of both sides here. So what that looks like is as follows. So the integral, yeah, that's better. That's a struggle. Oh, whatever, that's good enough. Uh, so the integral of f sub x with respect to x is again equal to the integral here uh, of y squared e to the xy. Again, with respect to x. From here, you can think about it this way. We're, again, integrating with respect to x. So this just gives us f back. So we have f. And then here, again, remember, x is the variable. y is a constant. We're looking for uh, some function that when you take the derivative, it's equal to this. A few different ways you can approach this. You can either, first of all, move this y squared out and then just integrate e to the xy with respect to x, in which case you get 1 over y e to the xy. Uh, or you can immediately immediately recognize that uh, just y e to the xy. If you take the derivative of this, again, uh, with respect to x, so you get y times e to the xy times y, because again, x is your variable, and then these two combine to get your y squared. And remember, from single variable calculus, we usually have to add the plus c as a constant because it's uh, equal up to a constant. In this case, we need to add a function h of y. Uh, you can call it whatever function you want, uh, just usually, usually use h. The reason is this. Uh, if we were to take the derivative of this function again with respect to x, we would get exactly this back. And because h uh, is simply a strict function of y, it just also goes to zero. So instead of a constant, uh, you have uh, a function of the opposite variable effectively. Okay. From here, we can then also compute f sub y. So f sub y, we again know is partial f, partial y. And it's equal to this uh, right over here, this same thing, so 1 plus xy times e to the xy. Um, yeah, and then we also have that. So th this is, again, just from the setup of our question. We have this equality. But again, we have this expression for f as well. And we can now make use of that uh, in order to equate this. So we'll also take the derivative of this with respect to y. So partial f, partial y. And again, if we do it over here, we again need a product rule again. So you have first times the derivative of the second times x. So again, first times derivative of the second, where y is your variable, plus second times the derivative of first, which is just y, which is just one. And again, h of y, the derivative with respect to y is h prime of y. OK, so from there, we have two expressions for partial f, partial y, and we know they must be equal, be equal to each other. So now we can equate these two, uh, and then we can go further from there. So I'll actually simplify this first. So. We have xy e to the xy and then plus e to the xy and then just h prime of y. Okay, from here we can make use of again the fact that these two are equal. I will also distribute this uh, into the bracket over here. So this ultimately then gives us this implication here. So 
After we distribute this into here, we get e to the x, y. And then e to the, and then just x, y, e to the x, y. So again, this is obtained by distributing this into here. And then we know this is equal to exactly this right over here. So it's equal to x, y, e to the x, y, plus e to the x, y, plus a to prime of y. And here, usually at this step, this is where you're going to see a lot of cancellations happening. Usually you will expect that usually your h prime of y will equal to zero, like in this case, but there are many other situations where that isn't the case, where you'll have to do some more work, but regardless, the strategy will basically um, always work. Okay, so we look on both sides, e to the xy, e to the xy, cancel. xy, e to the xy, and xy, e to the xy cancel very conveniently. So what you're then left with is h prime of y is equal to zero. And I'm gonna finish off these implications within uh, just one line. So if h prime of y is equal to zero, obviously if you integrate that, derivative of what is equal to zero, derivative of any constant. So in this case, h of y you know, is equal to c. But remember, there are many cases where h of y actually is a function that does include y in which case you'd simply just uh, work with it however you see fit from there. Last step, we just need to plug this uh, into our function f here. So we can say, uh, so f here is then equal to y e to the x y plus h of y, which is just equal to c. Usually you're only gonna be asked to find a, meaning a, like a single potential function. So you can just take c is equal to zero, for example, and then you just have y e to the x y. In a lot of the cases, uh, usually for term test three content, for example, you will only be expected to come up with a guess, something that looks like it. Uh, later on, after you do um, see content from 16.3, you will be introduced to stuff like this that you uh, will then be able to use to actually find a potential function, uh, just like this. So, uh, yeah, like so from here, we can just say, therefore, a potential function. is f and then again i usually just omit the x y because that's uh i'm just given or it's already known uh, and this is equal to again y e to the x y and then you can just assume c is equal to zero in this case so this right here would be your potential function but yeah you can also always verify this you can take the partial derivatives here with respect to x and y and verify that they're equal to p and q this video has already gone on much longer than I would have wanted it to, so I will admit that, but you, are, you can always feel free to check that for yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching.